London, he established himself as a very uh, successful and sought after portrait painter. And then latterly, having established himself and made a name for himself, developed a reputation, he uh, showed an interest and exploited his abilities in history painting, painting grand historical themes, which is really tapping into an appetite that was uh, emerging in Victorian London at the time. The historical event that is being recorded is the marriage of uh, Richard Fitzgilbert de Clare, Earl of Pembroke, known as Strongbow, to Aoife, the daughter of uh, Dermot McMurrah, the exiled King of Leinster. Dermot McMurrah had lost his lands and in desperation had sought assistance from the Norman mercenary or ad military adventurer Strongbow. Uh, Strongbow had had to go to Henry II to ask permission to, uh, to, uh, to bring his, his soldiers and, uh, and, and assistance to Ireland but he was, he was given that uh, largely on the grounds that it was seen that he would uh, provide or impose some control or a help to impose some control on a rather unruly Irish situation at the time. In exchange for his, for his assistance, Dermot McMurrah promised not only the, the hand of his daughter Aoife in marriage, but also his lands and his title after his death. So the picture is uh, a, a representation of this historical event consolidating the presence of the Normans in Ireland. In the background is the city or a representation of the city of Waterford which had been sacked thanks to the assistance of Strongbow and his uh, disciplined troops who you see these knights on horseback and it's, 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 it's uh, noticeable that they are the only figures who are actually on horseback. The Irish figures who are represented as being rather primitive with Bronze Age weaponry have neither horses nor armour and they cut quite a contrast to the uh, Norman figures in the background. There were very few medieval archaeological remains in, uh, in Waterford uh, on which MacLeese could have based his representation. So what you see is very much an approximation of the city. But it is interesting that, the, that this tower up in the top left is as much like Reginald's tower, the one or the single most important piece of medieval remains in Waterford than it is uh, than, than any other building in the country. So it's likely that he was referring to Reginald's tower. Uh, the gateway that you see, this arched gateway, um, calls to mind similar uh, fortifications in New Ross and Drogheda. So <clears throat> it does suggest that MacLeish was making a genuine attempt to represent a medieval city. But otherwise, it's very uh, fictional, very contrived, um, but also in keeping with the overall composition of the picture, which is very much like a theatrical set. Uh, one of the criticisms that was made by the contemporary press when the picture was exhibited in the Royal Academy in 1854 was that the uh, representation of space was very unconvincing, uh, but that was absolutely his intention. It is supposed to look like a, a series of vignettes produced uh, on, on this grand scale. There are certainly a lot of uh, differences between the watercolour and the very ambitious um, finished oil painting. I suppose MacLeese wants to emphasise things a little bit more with the oil painting. The bards, the strings of his harp are actually broken, uh, whereas they're not in the watercolour. Um, the hair colour um, of the likes of Aoife and the maidens and this woman here in the foreground uh, changes colour in the uh, painting. Uh, they're much more red in colour, whereas we have a, a difference of blonde and black here. And in the watercolour, the overall colouring is brighter than in the oil painting. The oil is, has much more chiaroscuro, so there's much more intensity in the contrast of colours. And um, hence the kind of uh, oppressive nature of the event that's taking place obviously is much more dramatic in the oil painting. Um, also in the watercolour we have the addition of the rainbow, the bright rainbow in the background and a very bright blue sky whereas in the oil painting this is a, a billowing mass of, of smoke from the ruined city of Waterford. So we have quite a lot of, of differences. Well, it went to, it was exhibited in the, in the Royal Academy in 1854, where it, was, where it was extremely well received by the public. What followed was a rather complicated process of negotiation between MacLeese and the Fine Art Commissioners. 
The Fine Art Commissioners wanted the uh, picture to be reproduced in situ in fresco, so on, it, it, to be repainted entirely based on the canvas on plaster, very much harking back to grand Renaissance buildings. MacLeese was uncertain about that. It wasn't a medium that he was happy working in. He also was unsure about the place that they had in mind to hang it. So he demurred, they demurred. There was a protracted lack of communication between both parties. And in the middle of this, Lord Northwick, a very grand collector at the time, uh, contacted MacLeese, having seen the picture, and offered him a very large sum of money to buy it. MacLeese, I think, had lost patience by this stage with the dithering of the Fine Art Commissioners and sold it to Lord Northwick. The Fine Art Commissioners hadn't lost interest in the picture, however, they went directly to Lord Northwick asking if they could borrow his picture uh, so that MacLeese could base the fresco on it, and Lord Northwick refused, uh, which was quite a significant uh, statement of, of, uh, of uh, in intent on his part. It was then sold and bought by Sir Richard Wallace, of the Wallace Collection, of Wallace Collection fame in London, one of the, the most uh, significant art collectors in, in England at the time. He was also, interestingly, a trustee of the, of the uh, National Gallery in London and a member of the Board of Governors and Guardians of the National Gallery here. And it was Richard Wallace who presented the picture to the gallery in 1879. Uh, because he had its uh, location very much in mind when he bought it. He wanted it to be, as he said, on Irish soil, and a letter uh, remains in the archives here from Wallace saying that he was very pleased to be able to present this picture to the, to the nation so that it could, it, it could uh, reside on Irish soil. So this is the original letter that Sir Richard Wallace um, would have sent to Henry Doyle, the director of the gallery at the time. My dear Mr Doyle, it has long been my wish to become the purchaser of Daniel MacLeese's picture, The Marriage of Strongbow, with the view of presenting it to the National Gallery of Ireland, as I always felt that this masterly painting of our great Irish artist might to find a permanent home on Irish soil. I am sure that you will be glad to hear that I I have now been able to realise my idea and the picture is mine until it is accepted, as I hope it will be, by the Director of the National Gallery in Dublin. Yours very truly, Richard Wallace.